Good afternoon. So it's going to be very challenging to keep my audience uh, see where my audience is. There. So I see one person there, a few people there. So let's see how it works. Right? It's nice to have a, a theater for a presentation, but uh, sometimes it's challenging to get the audience cultivated. So let's see how we do. Uh, thanks everyone for, uh, for coming. Um, I'm going to be uh, sharing with you the experience that happened to, um, to my college, to Austin's Community College, in, in uh, developing uh, an online readiness, a student online readiness course, and uh, the approach that we have taken, and hopefully uh, you can uh, get some tips and on, on the approaches that you're doing on your own campuses. So, um, the, uh, I just want to acknowledge the, uh, the people that have been uh, working with uh, this collaborative with, uh, with me. Uh, there's uh, different colleagues from uh, campuses from CUNY. We currently have uh, four, um, four campuses that are, are working and using this tool. And I'll, I'll tell you what the experience has been and also the benefit that has been for them, for us, in, in doing this, uh, this approach. So um, I have, uh, I don't know whether you can read it, but colleagues from Ostus, uh, from um, Bronx Community College, Lehman College, and John Jay College. So uh, I'm going to be talking uh, to you about uh, what that Are You Ready? Are You Ready course is about, and also um, why it is needed, uh, some of the um, benefits, unification of efforts, and also um, we'll be, um, I'll be sharing some, some numbers on what has been the use of this tool at my school so far, and uh, some info about how the, these pilots are starting to, to happen at the other campuses as well. Um, so a little bit about Austin's Community College. So we are part of a City University of New York. Uh, this is a, a university that has 24 campuses, 20, uh, 24 colleges, and uh, CUNY has about 260,000 students in total. Uh, Austin's, we have about 7,000 students. Uh, from those, um, about 50% are full-time students. So then we have to deal with the other 50% who are part-time students, students that are not uh, on campus most of the time, they work. And also, um, I think this is, is very common, this uh, figure in, in terms of community colleges, 66, 60, close to 67% are female students. We also have uh, most of our students, almost 60% of our students are Hispanic. Um, and uh, the next um, demographic is also about 22% are, are black. And uh, what has been for Ostos in, in the previous years, we've had um, the uh, student age has been uh, decreasing more and more. We used to have more adult students, uh, students that had a uh, uh, left the college and they wanted to come back, but more and more uh, we've seen our student population, uh, the age of the student population decreasing more and more. So uh, the average age right now is, is about 24 years of age, and about 80% of our students are less than 30 years old. And then I'll share with you uh, why that, that uh, indicator is, is important in, in the way that students are, are um, Approaching the learning of the different the different uh, skills and also the information that they're gathering. So before I start, I want to pose this question to you. I want to hear more from you and learn from you. Um, the first question is: How do you know the students are ready to take online courses? In your own experiences or how you're approaching at your own campuses, anyone? Sign up on their own. They decide. We don't. So we're not sure. We don't know for sure whether they even knew 
that, that the course was an online course because we have yeah, a lot of know, problems. They know it's online, they do know it's online, but they don't know that they are not ready. Excellent. <laughs> Anybody else? What, what has been your experience at your campuses? So a few is a few groups, uh, a small group, so then we can all just chime in, share share your experiences. Some professors may do a, an assessment at the beginning of the course. So it happens after the fact, right? So it's already too late for the Correct. student because the student is already there. Correct. So Formal. if the student uh, depends on financial aid, for example, uh, it might be difficult for them to drop at that moment because they're already enrolled in the class. It might not be another choice, perhaps, depending on, on, on the uh, reality of enrollments in your campuses. Right. Any other experience here? Yes, I do. <laughs> So, so we have to make sure that we have a way of knowing, right, whether they are able to. And then I'll, I'll, I'll share a little bit um, uh, later in the presentation on, on some differentiation that we have to make of our students. Um, so the other question is, what do you currently do to support those students that uh, want to take online courses? Anybody? Any initiative or how, what is the, the, the process when the students are there, yes? Well, what I do is have online conferences with the class, but they don't always come. Mm -hmm. And I talk to them, I email them, I tell them things, I give, I put more material that they can look at on the, on the page and see if that helps. The, my students this semester don't seem to be very aware. So this is a pretty bad semester. And it changes, right? From, from semester to semester, yes. the student population is different. Um, something that might be appealing for, for your students one semester might not work for the other semester. And we have to start kind of thinking on how, how do we um, become very dynamic in, in, in reacting to, to those realities from the students that we have. So, um, so what this course is, is um, a, uh, an online self-paced student readiness tool to prepare students uh, for the online learning, learning environment. So um, it is, since we use Blackboard, it is a Blackboard course, it's a self-paced Blackboard course that uh, includes information about what is online learning, uh, basic technology proficiency, uh, including the use of Blackboard, um, sub uh, sources of campus support, because also that's one of the challenges the students don't know, uh, that, that they have services that don't know where to go to get support, um, and uh, time management, especially in online learning, is critical to students understand that they need to manage their time uh, effectively, um, and also tech literacy. Right? It's, it's very important for, for students to make that differentiation be, between uh, knowing about the technology and using the technology. Right? Um, and then there is uh, some introduction about digital and web-based technologies that they are, they're going to be using throughout the course. So um, the approach that we, we, we took is uh, we identified that there's many learning styles. So we, uh, we try to use a variety of, uh, of uh, learning preferences. So we include uh, the same content through video, through text, then uh, to testing to make sure that the students uh, consume the, uh, the content of this course depending on what their preference is. Uh, there are some students that like to watch videos, and there's a lot of visual students, so uh, they will watch the video. If they don't, then there's, there's the content there. And we want to make sure that also they, they don't just go browse through and then try to click, 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 and continue to finish the course, so then they have to take a, a quiz. Um, all of this is um, 
using um, adaptive release, which is a, a, a feature in Blackboard that allows you to control how the, the content is being presented to, to the students and how the content, uh, how you are allowed to continue based on, on, on rules that you create. And one of the, um, the important elements there too is that students learn about netiquette in online learning, right? So, uh, you know, it's an online environment depending on how you create your course, you create a discussion board, you have conversations and, and students need to make sure that they are in, in an academic environment and that they have to present a behavior, good behavior to, um, to make sure that then they're respectful to the, their colleagues, to the faculty member, and uh, it's important for this to be upfront, to be there for them. Um, so I, as I mentioned, this is, is using adaptive release, and I'll, I'll do a quick demo later on. So for us, this is both an assessment for uh, student readiness for online learning, and also is an introduction to online learning. Uh, one of the challenges that we, we were facing in the past is if we want students to to learn at the environment, we were creating um, tutorials, we were creating uh, information or resources for them that were not connected in Blackboard. So we wanted to make sure that students, as they're learning, they're navigating through Blackboard without knowing. So at the end of the course, then they, they will be proficient in using that tool as well. And um, so also, you know, we know that the challenge is the students don't, don't uh, check emails. So students don't go and, and do the extra effort on identifying what resources the institution has. So we wanted to also make sure that they, through this course, they get to know all of those different resources that are available for them. So in a sense, using that uh, saying of bringing the horse to, to waters. Um, and in do, creating this course, it was uh, a good exercise in identifying a, you know, a consensus of basic elements that a student would need to, uh, to be, be more prepared to start an online course. So um, we want to make sure that um, students are ready and uh, also that uh, faculty don't don't have to deviate the time, the instruction time, in teaching students how to use the technology before you can even start covering the content. So we want to make sure that they're there, then faculty spend the time on, on what they have to spend time on, on, on teaching. Um, so this this is the uh, also the, the point that I, I mentioned before. Differentiated between what is tech literacy and tech consumer, right? Our students are very tech consumers, right? They use the technology better than anybody else. Mobile devices, social media, they know it all. Now, one thing is knowing how to use the, the technology to consume the technology. The other thing is how to, how literary you are to be able to use that technology in a way that is going to be helping you uh, for, your, for your learning. So we have to make sure that then we make that differentiation. Um, so as you know, but this, those are trends everywhere. There's a uh, growing online population everywhere. Um, and in our case, it's a growing institutional demand. Right? So CUNY is pushing to continue developing online programs. So then, uh, even though we have some limitations because of the nature of a community college, but then we have to continue pushing uh, the development of online courses. And we want to make sure well, uh, that's the hope, right, in, in being able to identify some standardization of, of doing this type of uh, online readiness for students. Um, and one, a number of, of elements that uh, helped us in developing this course was a research that we did uh, in uh, the student perceptions of online learning uh, in identifying what was missing for them. So are, do they, what do they need in order for them to to uh, do well in online courses, and many of the the, uh, the results that we gathered from that research helped us in shaping this this course as well. Um, and searching for, through different uh, research, different uh, 
universities across the, the country that uh, were doing something similar. So it's, it's been a combination of best practices, something that is already out there and nothing is created uh, new. So uh, it's good to take advantage of what is out there. And um, we had also the opportunity that the instructional designers in my office uh, have also the uh, experience of teaching, so then you have that also that uh, good input as well. Um, so, as I mentioned, there's four campuses. After we developed this, this course, uh, my goal has been to be sharing the, the, uh, the tool and, uh, and uh, seeing how other campuses could use the, the same tool and, and then becoming uh, partners in continue improving, developing this, this tool as well. So, uh, so far we have uh, those four colleges, there's a couple of more colleges that are, are um, in the process of, of, uh, of uh, participating in this, in this project. So the benefits, everybody needs to do this, right? Every college does it some way or another. Some colleges have uh, more elaborate, more resources, right? It all depends also of the resources. If your office has the resources to be able to, to deploy support for your students. Um, so standardization is one one of the benefits, uh, reducing uh, duplication of efforts, um, a campus neutral uh, application, then we can, uh, we have a wider population of students that we can do research on, and uh, also uh, we can use that information to continue improving the, the application. Uh, and one of the key benefits that has been for me, in my office I have a team and it all depends on how much work the team has to be able to put an effort of this being one of the projects for everything else that we do. So in working, uh, in a sense, as a consortium to be able to, to continue developing this, now I have access to experts from every campus that are looking at the same, at the same tool. And now uh, it's not just my team. I have four or six more teams that are going to be working and helping and shaping, reshaping this, this tool. Um, and for those of you that use Blackboard, it's the, the way of sharing this is a simple course copy. You export that and then you are able to use it without any, any, any problems. So it's very easy to, um, to share. Um, and this has some features that um, allows you to make it very neutral in terms of the content, and you can add modules for uh, your campus specific information that uh, wouldn't um, become uh, very time consuming in customizing the course for your needs. Um, and, and the potential for cross-campus research, uh, it's, it's very um, powerful what we can do with the data as as more and more students are, are using these tools, then uh, we will have a lot of uh, research questions that we can answer. And um, the approach that we're using uh, is a collaborative approach of the uh, crystal clear agile uh, framework, uh, is, which is focusing on, on end user feedback. It's also focusing on uh, a collaborative development process and also an adaptive cycle, right? And then these elements uh, say a lot about the realities of our students, the changing population. Uh, one semester is different to the other, to the next semester, so perhaps the way that we were deploying or, or, or developing this uh, this tool will have to change. So this kind of methodology that. Uh, as a connection of all of the different uh, uh, usual uh, development uh, frameworks helps a lot to, to make sure that we can be more flexible, but then uh, we make sure that we keep this continuously uh, being developed. Um, so some of the results that, uh, that we have so far. So we've been able to have five iterations so far of this, of this tool. And uh, at OSTOS we have in a given semester, we have about 100 uh, online courses between a hybrid and, and asynchronous. 
uh, which represents about 10% of our courses, and uh, which give, gives us more or less a population of online students of about 2,500 to 3,000 uh, students that are take an online course in a given semester. And from, from there, uh, we've had uh, about 2,400 students that have taken the course so far in all of those five iterations. And you see three, three bars. So there's this, uh, the differentiation there is some students that registered or enrolled in that course is self-enrollment. Uh, there's a few people that don't continue, just leave, very minimal. And the, uh, the next column there is for those uh, students that have completed the first assessment activity. And that's, that first assessment activity is, is a set of questions that ask the students to assess themselves on how ready they think they are to take an online course. And based on the results, there are uh, explanations on the scores that they got in these different categories. And one of the things that we've seen, if the students see that, um, well, they got a good score, so they think they're ready, and then they just leave, right? And it also depends on how the faculty member uh, works with the students and what they require from them. And uh, then the last column is all those students that have completed and gotten a, uh, a, a certificate uh, for, the, for the course. So we have uh, about 50% of the students that, uh, that enroll in that course finish the, uh, the, uh, the whole course. And um, to some of the results, we have uh, um, an assessment. So since we want to make sure that we, this, we continue developing this course, there is a, a, a survey at the end of this, this tool that uh, asks the students to kind of let us know what work, what didn't work for them. And some of the indicators that uh, you see here, one of the questions was uh, whether the videos were useful for them. Um, so in the previous, the previous uh, iterations, we saw similar results as the uh, 4.0, which was about 80% of the students uh, strongly agreed that that helped. For this semester, there's only about 50% of them that say that strongly helped. So uh, that goes to the point that we were discussing that you know it changes by semester. You know, not perhaps this time we have students that are not so um, uh, apparent to use video content. So, uh, and this other question is about whether they feel that after taking this course, whether they feel that they're prepared to take an online online course. And uh, for the most part, we have about 50% of the students that strongly agree, and another 30 plus percent that they agree that this has helped them to, um, to be better prepared to take an online course. So, um, so key elements that, uh, that uh, we had to have in order for this to, to work is that faculty is a critical component of this, this initiative and, and unless and it all depends on, on the realities of the different universities. Unless uh, you're able to create uh, mandatory requirements for online courses, in our case, it's very difficult to do that. So uh, we depend on how the faculty member that is teaching online, how they want to use this tool. Uh, many of them require the students to do it, uh, and, um, and they give them uh, a grade that's part of their note, or some of them they give them an extra credit, or some of them they just recommend them to do, and then you see, you see the uh, the differences, right? So uh, nothing that is extra credit is very appealing for a student, right? I just have to do whatever I, I need to do, but if it's not a not a, not a mandatory, I might not do. It. Yeah. You're saying faculty participation, and this makes me wonder, it suggests that this is not a separate course, 
but it's rather integrated into whatever course the students are taking? Yes. So how long, so I would like a description please of how that, how that works. What does this look like when a teacher takes this course and integrates it into her course? Sure, sure. I'm, I'm going to um, give you a quick, a quick demo in the next slide actually. Um, it is, this course will take the student half an hour to complete. So it is not time consuming. Uh, we want to make sure that then it, is, it doesn't become something that is very cumbersome for them, but then it has enough content for them to be ready for, for the online course. Um, and one of the things that we've seen also is that, you know, some of the students that had to retake the test, uh, and I'll explain you how that works, um, they, they admitted that they just rushed and they didn't read and, and just wanted to go through the course to see whether they were able to, uh, they were able to, to complete it. Um, and also one of, one of the other elements that, that will work is getting the participation from advisement offices. Right? So depending on how your structures are, you could have uh, uh, coaches, advisors, so uh, work with them. Um, for us, we, we work first with faculty, we got some buy-in from faculty, and then once the, uh, the initiative was mature enough, we had conversations with uh, admission, I mean, uh, with uh, advisors. And uh, now students are going to be taking these courses way before enrolling in a course. It's becoming more informed before they, they make a decision on whether an online course is is uh, a good choice for me, uh, and and this semester is given is being given uh, good results on how they're providing that information, that advisement to the students as well. So um, and also one of the the advantages for us is the amount of student support that usually comes to my office has decreased a lot. So uh, because most of the of the information is being uh, solved through them learning about the content, the content that the course is presenting. So, uh, so this is, This has uh, some presentation also, it's, it's giving me. But basically, the course has uh, six modules, right? So the, um, all of those, those modules are being presented uh, sequentially, and this is more or less what, how it's gonna look like for the student. The student is presented with a, a, a video with the content that uh, they, are, they are going to consume and the video well, uses one of those uh, latest techniques that has been very popular for students to become engaged in, in watching videos using uh, uh, those whiteboarding, whiteboarding video approach. That's what's supposed to have audio, but uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's of involvement and interaction throughout the semester. Some find online learning to be a positive, rewarding experience. Others experience frustration and difficulty succeeding in this type of class. Possessing certain qualities will increase your chance for success with and enhance your enjoyment of online classes. You know yourself best. Answering 10 questions in the self-assessment below thoughtfully will help you determine if online learning is right for you. To be so you get the idea. So you get you have the video, um, then the students get the same content that I was in the video, they, they get the content in text format, uh, and then they have to take the assessment. Um, 
test. If they don't go through that, those steps, they won't be able to, to advance to the next uh, uh, module. And uh, once they take the test, uh, what happens is, depending on the um, Depending on the scores that they get, they, they get a, a, um, an explanation of what that means for them and whether that is something that they um, they want to uh, to pursue as, as uh, wanting to register for an online course. So, um, so that's that's the menu, um, all of the uh, different modules. And once once the student uh, completes the uh, the final the final uh, module, and then all of the modules have kind of the same the same uh, format. They have the videos. They have the the test. then the student will be earning an online uh, learning badge. Uh, so uh, with this badge, they can, they can uh, share with the faculty member. That will be the proof that they have uh, for uh, them completing the online course. They get a certificate, and um, that's how faculty will then capture whether the students have actually done it. And then I, I'm very I'm happy to, to share with you um, this application if you're you're interested in learning more about it. I'm the, more than um, willing to share with the, uh, this content as well. Uh, so for us, the next steps on this as as we continue with these initiatives, uh, one one of those is continue to do the assessment on each campus and see how this tool reacts to different student populations. Uh, we're going to um, do a cross-campus research study. Uh, we are already developing some some questions for that. Uh, we're going to be reaching out additional CUNY campuses, and uh, and as well uh, continue to improve this tool based on that that uh, development process that I mentioned earlier. And uh, we're very open to share beyond CUNY. Um, any, anybody that will be interested, uh, that will be a win-win situation because we will also get um, get the knowledge from the end of these other institutions that will have all, all different experiences and it's going to be helping everybody else as well. So, um, I think that's all I have. So if you have any, any questions, I'm happy to, to answer any, any questions that you have. Yep. So, obviously CUNY has the money to put into this and the time to put into this. I'm not sure that my college does that. So this is specific, the administration said we need this and they asked you to do this, or how did this come about? Um, well, not necessarily. Uh, I think it all depends on, on, on the institution, right? Uh, and whoever is leading. In my case, um, this was something that I, I saw uh, that there was a need for us to, to, to improve the way that we are preparing our students. So part of it is, well, the initiative from, from the office, there was nothing that was uh, uh, directed from, from administration. It was more on, on, on trying to, to improve the processes for um, for the, the way that we, we prepare our students in online learning. And um, this additional step in um, working with other, other colleges, that is just self-initiative. It's, it's a lot more work, isn't it? It, it is difficult to collaborate with, from within your campus. 
Right, it's a lot more difficult to collaborate with with uh, colleagues from other campuses, but it's worthwhile. Sometimes the sacrifice gives a lot of benefits because uh, you know, for me, it gives me the opportunity to uh, identify whether um, the content that you're developing behaves the same way with students from different um, campuses, right? And then we might. Uh, identify whether the tendency of or putting the pressure on a student population or the characteristics of the student population it is uh, why your tool is behaving uh, in a certain way or if, if whether there's there's some other other uh, uh, causes of, of those behaviors any any other question I don't know if uh, you can help me turn turning on the lights because I cannot see uh, anybody. Yes, yes, because um, now you have uh, data to help you make decisions on whether you have to change the way you present in the content. Um, and we've seen that um, so far for all the previous iterations, kind of the the, the video component of the of that uh, survey has been kind of steady, very high in, in students saying that, you know, they strongly believe that uh, that helped them a lot to understand the content. And this semester, will, and the results are for less than a month of, of this this, uh, this version running. Uh, we'll see what happens in the next the next iteration or the next semester, whether, whether that changes. And if it continues to change, then we have to identify uh, based on all, all, all the other components because you know since you have uh, an assessment at every module, then you have to see whether students are not completing or where in the stage they're they're leaving the uh, the course. And you know this this the structure allows you to to find that information because you you know exactly how many students complete each of those different assessments. And uh, then it's, it's, a, it's a matter of identifying how you can improve the, uh, the design. Yeah. I don't know whether that answers your question. It answers. I have a second question. If sure. There is no, okay, go ahead. Um, do students complete the assessment only once in their student life or since you mentioned that the module that the, you call it course, um, this assessment course is integrated within the faculty courses, is it possible that a student completes that assessment multiple times, or do we just record their assessment once during their student life? At this moment it is recorded once, um, and students have the, the uh, option of going back to the previous versions of the, of the course that they have to they have taken, they go back and they print print their certificate as a proof of uh, uh, completion to their faculty member. So we've seen many of the, of the students doing that. Um, and we haven't checked the, uh, the information in that, at that level of detail. Um, there might be some students that they don't bother to go and look for it, they just go and, and take it again. Because you know, it, it doesn't take much it doesn't take longer for them to complete this test. And uh, that is also um, very useful for the faculty member to make this perhaps be the, the, non, the, the first assignment for the class. Um, I've, I've seen some faculty members that have uh, 
have done it uh, even the week, the week before. They send an announcement and say, well, you know, by the first day of class, I need to make sure that you complete this, this, uh, this course. And, you know, it, as I said, it all depends on how the faculty member structures uh, the requirement for this, this course. Thank you. Any other last questions? Good. Thank you very much.